Hello and welcome to LSU Focus. It is pre-match build-up show time for potentially the biggest game in Liverpool's history in just two days' time. I am, of course, talking about the Champions League final against Tottenham Hotspur in Madrid. As you can see, I've got the Spanish flag shirt ready. It's just like the one I had for last year's final, except obviously the Ukrainian flag has been pushed out. The Spanish flag has been moved in. Kiev is in the past. It's now all about Madrid. Hopefully this isn't a bad omen. Please don't come, you know, rushing to me if Liverpool end up not taking the trophy home. But let's not even consider that as a possibility right now. Let's just get excited for what is going to be an absolutely phenomenal game. I was thinking about it earlier and I think the only thing that kind of puts a slight dampener on it is the fact that it is against Spurs which doesn't really feel like a European Cup final. You know, it's not against Juve or Real or like a Dortmund or an Ajax or even a PSG or something like that. It's against Spurs. And yeah, that's kind of more of a League Cup final type of matchup. But put all of those things to one side. The European Cup is still at stake. Liverpool are going for big number six in Madrid on Saturday evening. And I mean, look, it's it's a game that almost sells itself, but I'm going to try and sell it to you guys anyway. First things first, the really, really interesting thing about this final, if you're looking at it, at it from a neutral perspective, which I'm pretty sure you aren't, but I'm going to kick on with it anyway, is the fact that Liverpool are actually probably, or almost definitely, the favourites for this match. That kind of took me by surprise at first. I thought it was a bit similar to, you know, the games we played against City last season, where, yeah, there was a big gap between us in the league, but on, on one day, on one sort of 90-minute stretch, anything can happen because both teams have got the quality. Both teams have got fantastic managers who can, you know, work their way out of problems. They've got players on the pitch who can find solutions to difficult situations as well. So it's pretty, pretty even, or at least that's what I thought and I think what most Liverpool fans think. But if you went and asked a Spurs fan about it or look at like even the odds on any betting company for this game, they are overwhelmingly in Liverpool's favour. We are seen as the massive, massive odds on favourites for this match. And I think that's going to be really interesting because I don't know whether that helps or hinders Liverpool. Obviously, we were the underdog for the final last year. In the other two finals that we've been in under Jurgen Klopp, I think it's fair to say we were the underdogs, definitely against City in the League Cup and also probably against Sevilla in the Europa League as well because, you know, they've won it the last two times and everything. They have that kind of pedigree. Whereas now, Spurs have never been in the European Cup final, whereas this is our ninth. It's, you know, only 12 months since our last one as well. So Liverpool have got the pedigree here. Liverpool have got the experience and I think the experience is what's going to really help us get over the favourites tag because I think if we were the favourites but we were also in the same situation as Spurs where it was their first European Cup final as a team together and you know Jurgen Klopp's first massive massive final as Liverpool manager then I'd be a little bit nervous that maybe the tag would almost get to them although that almost sounds ridiculous saying out loud at the moment because Liverpool have been phenomenal at dealing with pressure all the way through the season and I'll be honest I never doubt these boys anymore because if you do they'll make an absolute fool of you plenty of people doubt them against Barcelona in the second leg and they just made a show of anyone who did so you know I think the favourites tag will probably help us I reckon because at the end of the day that means we're the more likely team to win it means we've got the better players maybe marginally or almost definitely the better manager as well so Liverpool are definitely the favourites I think we can't shy away from that we the players have got to embrace that on the pitch they've got to treat the match as if it's theirs to control the trophy has got to be theirs to win so I think it probably makes it ever so slightly easier because because like I said, we've got the experience as well. We know, you know, we know what it takes to win a European Cup final because a team did it to us in style last year. Maybe not in style in terms of brilliant football, but certainly in terms of showing you the ropes of how to manage your way through a final of that magnitude. Real Madrid did it flawlessly and Liverpool just didn't know how to cope. So obviously as well, it's so important that I think we get the trophy here because this season deserves something massive at the end of it. We missed out on the league title despite getting a phenomenal 97 points. We've had an incredible run through the European fixtures as well. This is probably, it's definitely the best Liverpool team I've ever seen. Potentially the best Liverpool team, or maybe, all, again, almost definitely the best Liverpool team since the golden age when we were winning European Cups and League titles and FA Cups and League Cups left, right and centre and just dominating English, European and world football. This is the best Liverpool team since then. And if they finish this absolutely spellbinding, spellbounding, whatever it is, season, 
without a trophy to show for it, that will just be absolutely catastrophic. So I think we've got to win it for that reason as well. I also think it's so important to win this trophy because it will help us kick on. It will help us next season. You know, we can probably put a little bit more into winning those like the League Cups and the FA Cups, the little trophies on the side. Once we've sort of broken the seal and got the absolute big one that is the Champions League, it'll help banish all these ideas that Jurgen Klopp has a final problem. I don't think he does personally. I think you can see the reasons behind all of the finals we've lost under him and they don't really point to any sort of, you know, lack of direction from the manager or poor tactical decisions or anything like that you know Seville they just ran out of energy Manchester City it went down to penalties that's a lottery and of course we all know what happened in Kiev and speaking of Kiev I think one more reason that we have to win this trophy is because it justifies Kiev you know if we win it this year Everyone can look back on that final a year ago and say that was necessary. We needed to lose that. We needed to take those lessons, that anger, that emotion, that raw passion and desire to come back and avenge that loss and win the trophy for real. You know, if we then win it on Saturday in Madrid, suddenly that's all worthwhile. That whole experience becomes worthwhile and justified. If we don't win it in Madrid... Kiev was just pointless and depressing and a to not a waste of everyone's time. Let's not be ridiculous. It was an absolutely phenomenal experience. But it will be annoying to know that we've once again spurned the chance to win the Champions League, especially because it would have been to Tottenham Hotspur as well. And no one wants to see that. So team news going into the game. Everyone pretty much knows what's going on. You know, that little, that well, not little, massive three-week gap between the last game and this one means that anyone who was carrying knocks for that is pretty much fully fit now. You know, Roberto Firmino is obviously the one that everyone's been keeping an eye on. He missed out the last on the last three games of the season. He's been working towards it, working slowly upwards. He's done the odd training session on his own as well, away from the first team, just to kind of build up his fitness in different ways. The club have clearly managed him very, very, very carefully to make sure that he is fully fit for this match. So he will be available. Oxley chamberlain will be available as well, which would be fantastic. I'm not sure how much football he'll play because obviously he's only really had one kick around. I think that little substitute appearance against Huddersfield was the only time we've seen Ox this season, apart from he might have come on against Wolves. I can't really remember because there were other things on my mind, of course, during that game, certainly towards the end. So, you know, he's available, but maybe won't play a huge part. The, everyone is fine. Everyone is fit. Anyone you're worried about, don't be. They're going to be there. And of course, we've got the added uh, bonus of having a 12-man bench for this final as well, which is going to become, you know, universal across the Champions League for whatever reason. Who really knows next season? But they're doing it for the final as well. So we'll have plenty of players to call upon. Every single player is going to feel like they have a part to play in this final. We've got a four substitute in extra time as well, in case any of you guys didn't know that. So if legs do start to tire, which I don't think they will, because again, three weeks rest and this Liverpool team has shown that it is fit enough to go the extra mile. It's why we beat Spurs at Anfield a couple months ago, because they just did not have the legs and Liverpool got to the 89th minute and still had running in their legs, you know, passion in their hearts, fire in their bellies. They were still going and they got the goal when Spurs were knackered and, you know, hopefully we see something similar in Madrid on Saturday night. So, as for how I think Liverpool are actually going to line up for the game, obviously it is the holy goalie. It is Alisson Becker in goal. The absolute great big bear of a man. The unstoppable brick wall. The man who just collects clean sheets like, I don't know, their Easter eggs. I can't really think of a decent simile for that one. But the guy, the guy who stops the ball going in the net pretty well, I think is a fair way to sum it up. How wonderful that we've actually got a really, really good goalie. A goalie who not only won't lose us the game, fingers crossed, touching any wood I can spot, but also could win us the game as well and has done already several times this season. What a great feeling it is to have in between the sticks, almost definitely for this game. Joel Matip and Virgil van Dijk, I think is going to have to be the centre-back pairing. I think if he was fully fit and he'd been playing for a while, it would be Joe Gomez, despite the fantastic form of Joel Matip, because I think Gomez and van Dijk, they complement each other brilliantly. They are by far and away the two best centre-backs we've got at the club, but because Joe Gomez hasn't played much football and Joel Matip has been brilliant brilliant on this run and you know we saw with Dejan Lovren last year even though you know he's still a hit and miss player even at the best of times he had such a brilliant run on the way to the Champions League final and he repaid us with that in the final as well because he played absolutely brilliantly in Kiev so hopefully we see something similar from Joel Matip the fullbacks obviously 
uh, Robertson and Alexander-Arnold. It's not a question. It's a fact. They are going to start, barring any last-minute horrendous injuries, which would absolutely break my heart because we really, really need them. And they are probably two of the lads that I most want to see lifting that gigantic trophy uh, on Saturday night in Madrid. So that is the defence. The midfield, this is probably where the biggest question lies. I think... Fabinho, he has to play. He has to play that number six role. A, because he's brilliant at it. And B, because it frees up Henderson to play the number eight role where he has been a complete and utter revelation. I think Henderson and Fabinho are nailed on to start. The other spot, I think everyone thinks it's pretty much a toss-up between Milner and uh, Gini Van Alden. I think it's probably going to be Van Alden. I know Jurgen Klopp loves to trust James Milner in these kind of situations, but after what Van Alden did in that second leg against Barcelona, coming on, scoring those goals, inspiring the team, he was utterly phenomenal. And I think, you know, Van Alden, Fabinho, and Henderson is such a perfect balance of midfield, especially for a game like this where we're expected to dominate, but we are up against brilliant opposition as well. If this was against maybe like a Man City or a Juventus or a Barcelona, I'd maybe say yes, stick Jimmy Milner in there because Jurgen Klopp loves to play him in those types of games. But because we are the favourites, I think it has to be Gina Van Alden. And also having Milner on the bench, you know, he can come on and play so many positions. He can play midfield, left back, right back. It's great to have him as an option should anything go horribly awry because we saw last season what happens when you don't have the options in a certain position on the bench. Even though you've got some good players, when Salah went off, there was no one like him who could replace him. So we need players like Milner on the bench who, you know, if Trent gets injured or Robbo gets injured or Milner or Henderson or Fabinho, he can cover all of them. Essentially half the outfield positions can be covered by James Milner. So I think he should be on the bench for this game. And I think Vinaldum should join Fabinho and Henderson in the midfield. And then the front three, the front three picks itself. Sadio Mane, already European Cup final goal scorer. Roberto Firmino, the facilitator of pretty much everything brilliant Liverpool do. And Mo Salah, out for revenge, out to get that medal and that trophy that he knows he deserves to shove it in the face of Sergio Ramos and all of his critics and all those Spurs players and lift it high for the Liverpool fans in Madrid. So taking a little look at Spurs then and the sort of general tactical battle that will potentially unfold on the pitch in Madrid on Saturday night, obviously they are weaker than us. They've had some injury problems of their own. So they've got a lot of players who are coming back who haven't played at the end of the season but have had those three weeks of rehabilitation. And it's such a tough decision for Maurizio Pochettino to make. You know, so many players there are going to be saying, boss, I'm fit, I want to play. And players who, if they were fully match fit, would definitely be in the starting eleven. But he's just got... A real, real struggle on his hands there because we, we saw at the end of last season, not last season, this season even, it's still, of course, the 2018-19 season at least until Sunday morning. But, you know, we saw that they were really, really on their last legs in terms of the players they had available. So they've got a tough decision there. However, they will feel like their name is on the trophy. You know, I've watched their run to the Champions League final and I did not realise how many times they were that close to going out. You know, like at least three, maybe even four of their group stage games, they scored last minute goals that got them through. Goals that if they didn't score, they would have been out in match day four, match day five, match day six. They kept on clinging on and just about got out of that group alive. And then Dortmund was the only real sort of point in their Champions League season where they've looked comfortable, where they've looked at home, where they've got through doing the business like Liverpool have basically done all season where we've just managed games and looked absolutely brilliantly apart from, of course, the semi-final from hell slash from heaven as it turned out. So, you know, they will feel like their name is on this trophy. The way they got to the final, that semi-final against Ajax, you know, I remember watching it and just hands on my head saying, oh my God, I cannot believe this. How on earth have Tottenham Hotspur done that? Virtually the last kick of the game from Lucas Moura to put them into the final. It doesn't get you know, more incredible than that, unless, of course, you're Liverpool Football Club and you're just beating Barcelona 4-0. But anyway, they will feel like their name's on the trophy because of that. The fans will be behind them. The fans will believe, which I think if they had had a sort of a middling run to the trophy, then, I mean, there's no such thing as a middling run to the final, but if they had had something a little less spectacular, they'd maybe be a little bit more overawed from Liverpool, by Liverpool, but they feel like fate's on their side, and I'm sure the players will as well. So it's going to be interesting to see how that pans out, you know, whether that means that they will come flying out the traps and try and hit Liverpool early or whether you know they'll hang on and believe that whatever happens they can get that late goal they can jam something from somewhere that's going to just you know get them back into the game when everything's been going against them all day it remains to be seen but I think it will certainly have an effect on them and the Liverpool players it's their job to just make sure that it does not affect us in any sort of way obviously in terms of team news as well Harry Kane is confirmed he'll be fit for this game 
Whether or not he'll start is a different matter. I think it's quite likely that he will because, you know, Pochettino will probably just feel like he almost has to. And also in a final, you know, like I said, it can come down to those moments where you just need one player in the right place at the right time once in those 90 minutes to just stick the ball in the back of the net. And Pochettino knows that Harry Kane is that type of player. Personally, I'm not sure whether I'm happy that he's probably going to play or not because I do think Spurs play worse without him. I think that, you know, they try to play too much through him. Players like Son and Lucas Moura are diminished by the fact that they try and feed everything to Harry Kane rather than trying to do things and play those beautiful kind of false nine roles that they did so fantastically in the latter stages of the championship using knockouts themselves so I think they maybe play a fraction worse or maybe even a fair bit worse uh, with that with Kane in the side but on the flip side like I said he can change matches in a moment you know if they get a penalty and Harry Kane's on it you almost feel like it's destined to go in because he's fantastic at them if the ball goes through to him on in a one-on-one -on -one situation you know I love Alisson and maybe he will save it but I would feel a lot better if it went in a one-on-one -on -one situation to someone like you know Moussa Sissoko who absolutely blazed over at Anfield earlier on in the season so it's going to be interesting with that dynamic as well. I think in terms of how they approach the game, because of this whole thing about, you know, them being the name being on the trophy and the kind of fate taking them this far and hopefully, you know, destiny taking them to the trophy and the fact that they're the underdogs, the way that they play as well, I think they're going to try and make it frantic. They're going to try and get in Liverpool's faces early on, make the game mad, stop us from stamping our authority because we've seen in Europe this season where Liverpool stamp their authority on a match that's it. It is absolutely over. You know, the games against Bayern Munich, that second leg at the Allianz, Liverpool just controlled it from minute one to minute 90. Bayern just didn't have a sniff because Liverpool were in charge the whole way through. The second leg against Porto, once we get our first goal and sort of stem that early tide, it's just snatched from Porto and they are not getting it back. They're not even, you know, within an arm's reach of getting to it. And even the second leg against Barcelona, because it was 4-0 and because it was a comeback, there's this idea that it's framed as, you know, this mad thing that just happened out of nowhere and no one really understands. No one even believes it happened, but it did. But if you watch the game, you know, Liverpool just dominated. Barcelona just didn't get a sniff. Liverpool just ran the show. You know, they picked their moments. They knew when to go for the jugular. They knew when to sit off and invite Barcelona on. They knew when to stop Barcelona applying too much pressure. They just ran the show absolutely brilliantly. And if we start to do that in Madrid, then Spurs have not got a hope in hell of winning this game because once Liverpool start to run games, Liverpool start to score goals and a lot of them. You know, Liverpool just don't miss their chances when they're in charge. So <clears throat> I think... Spurs will try and make it mad, which will be interesting because the dynamic between us and Spurs over the last couple of years seems to generally be we dominate the first half, certainly the first half an hour. We score. We should score more, but we don't. And Pochettino, because he's a great in-game manager, he, manager, he's fantastic at changing his formation, making little tweaks without making subs, just working with what he's got on the pitch. We saw it at Anfield uh, at the back end of the season just gone where you know he made that decision to move Danny Rose into midfield and go to a back four. It completely neutralised our fullbacks, and then Spurs get back into the game. They get an equaliser and then the last 20 minutes is just carnage. Now, if Liverpool want to do that and then win the game 2-1 with a last minute jammy winner then fine do it but if you want to do that and you know potentially risk losing out on the Champions League final maybe don't maybe just try and run the show and just don't let Spurs get away with turning it into an absolute maelstrom of nonsense and chaos and footballing brilliance but you know I'm sure it's going to be a brilliant game I think that one of the real big disappointments as well with Kiev was that it wasn't really a very good game once Salah went off you know, it was a game where the moments and flashpoints were interesting if you're a neutral, heartbreaking if you're a Liverpool fan, obviously. But apart from that, nothing really happened. It was a bit of a naff football game, really. Whereas I think this one, between two of the best managers, two of the best sides, sides who love to play football, sides who probably aren't going to use the dark arts, who aren't going to look to win this final the proper way, I think it's going to be a phenomenal 90, potentially 120 minutes of football. And if you want a score prediction... <sighs> 3-1 Liverpool, why not? Maybe 2-0, but I'll go with 3-1 because I think it's hard to see past Spurs not maybe you know finding their way through somehow, especially if they've got Kane on the pitch. But I do think at the end of the day, it's going to be Liverpool lifting that trophy. We're going to win number six. We're going to take it home. We're going to be European champions again. And Jürgen's Reds are going to kick off a new dynasty of footballing brilliance. So that is all for today's video. Thank you guys very, very much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, as always, you know what to do. Hit that like. 
like button down there, hit that subscribe button there if you're new around here. Check out some of the other videos that I've put out on the channel over the past few days, weeks, months, whatever. Don't forget to follow at LFC Focus TV on Twitter and I'll be back on Saturday night after we've hopefully lifted the European Cup. Until then, bye for now.